So on a daily basis, I use English, um, but I also use German because I work in a mixture of English and German. So currently, I would say I use um, German on a daily basis because I use it at work. That's the main or pretty much only language I use. And um, I speak English on a daily basis as well because I speak English at home and I have a lot of friends with which I would speak in English too. Uh, and French, however, I speak occasionally when I'm speaking to my friends back home, but it's not um, a language that I currently use so much in my everyday life. On a daily basis, I speak German and English at work, and I speak Hungarian at home. And that is why the Spanish I learned at school and at university is pretty much non-existent anymore. <laughs> So on a daily basis, I think I use mostly English, but being in Germany, there's a lo lot of exposure to German, so I guess I don't speak it as much, but I still read it a lot and I hear it a lot. I do use it from time to time, either on Teams chat <laughs> for work or, or just like casual conversation with my colleagues who very nicely wants to help me improve my German. Um, but also I read a lot in Malay because if I want to read about news in Malaysia then we get a lot of like the Malaysian um, I guess Reddit or, <laughs> or um, just news in general so that happens a lot. But I also speak Mandarin a lot with my mom mainly, uh, some friends here in Germany and some friends back home sometimes. I'm thinking about when I was a child, growing up uh, bilingual, going to two different schools, one thing that was um, quite annoying and a bit of a challenge was that the expectations were different for writing in the English school and French school because in French school they want you to do cursive writing and, and if you're still writing um, like, you know, they're like, oh no, this is baby writing, you can't just write like they call it baton, writing with like sticks. You can't write like sticks. You have to you, with sticks. You have to do the cursive writing. But then the same happened in the English school that they wouldn't want you to write in cursive writing there. So it gets you into trouble in both situations. Um, so that's an example of a challenge. Um, and another one is I think the expectation of um, non multilingual speakers that because you have several languages that the words just come to you like this and they don't always and, and um, I think it happens to everyone but I think it's definitely a um, sort of a, uh, a phenomenon for multilingual speakers that when you are asked on the spot to translate something it doesn't necessarily compute straight away in the brain. <laughs> so the first one I can think of is definitely translating from one language to the other when I speak. This is more prevalent in German. The first time I tried to like let's say go to a, a pharmacy and just ask for something for headache and I said haben sie etwas für Kopfschmerzen which in English sounds perfectly fine you have something for headaches but that means like you have something that causes headaches in German you would want something gegen Kopfschmerzen um, which is something I learned later and I will use I use them um, but yeah I tend to make mistakes like that because I translate it directly into German and then use it and it just sounds odd so there are some terms that I've only learned in German because they're very specific to what I work in and I don't know the English so it's really difficult sometimes when I'm, I'm having a conversation in English because then I just have to throw in the German words because I don't know the English. Um, also, I go from a meeting in German to a meeting in English and to a German and then I'm not very good at switching languages so it's really difficult for me to change easily and so sometimes I would reply then in the same language that I've been thinking in. The other thing is that uh, sometimes, you know, you just want to practice, right? I mean, I'm in Germany. So I still remember the first couple of years where I would like start a conversation in German and immediately regret it because I don't understand the answer that was given to me. <laughs> and I'll be like, hmm, okay, <laughs> let's 
then maybe maybe we go back to English. Yeah, and that that is a little awkward. Um, but I feel like I I I wouldn't I don't know to call it disadvantage or not, but it does make me feel like I can speak all these languages, but I, I don't master any of them. So I mean, in English, yes, I do speak it every day when I was a kid. Um, even growing into adulthood, I would speak it every day. But a lot of those words that we don't use in Malaysia, or we can, because of the way we speak in Malaysia, where we, you know, weave different languages into English as we speak. Sometimes I just don't know what that English word is or how is it pronounced if I learned it from a book. Um, for example, you can I can just go to a place and say like, um, I want one chicken rice, tapau. And tapau means take away. And everyone understands that you can go anywhere and just say you want a tapau. But um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so this is something that I'll then have to learn. Of course, uh, this is a course example because we do know the word take away, uh, the phrase, but uh, I think in some other places called takeout, uh, and then you learn things like this that you know it's interesting, but it makes you feel like you don't you don't know all I don't know all the languages that I speak. So when I first moved to the UK for a longer period of time, it was it wasn't just you know moving from sort of textbook English to actual British English, it was also sort of these tiny little things that you had to get used to or I had to get used to that yeah I can say that I'm taking the bus to go somewhere but this is not a sentence that I heard from anyone else and then you know you have to listen out like okay what do they say and like these tiny little things that uh, you just can't get anywhere else like not even if you watch films or listen to podcasts or something that existed at the time and that was one thing and the other one was pronunciation because like even at uni like my fourth year living in the UK my roommates were still saying like oh that's not how you pronounce it like, can you just get off my back please I alone speak three times as many languages as the rest of you together so that is something that I had to get used to, that me speaking multiple languages is not something that is a concept familiar to everyone and that they don't have like a high empathy or understanding about how I have to express myself in a second language and yeah, I appreciate them helping me to, you know, um, work on my pronunciation but um, yeah it's uh, something that people have to get used to and this is up to us to, to tell them that okay can you please just like, dial it down <laughs> well I think there are some concepts that just don't exist in English or they don't exist in German and so when you have these other languages to speak in it means that you can express yourself in a much better way as long as the other people speak the languages as well which as an expat most people you can speak with a mixture of English and German and they'll understand which means that you have a much broader vocabulary and a better way of expressing the concepts that you are talking about. I think because I speak multiple languages and I think in multiple languages it's easier for me to understand when someone um, tries to say something in a language that I speak and I know that they might not speak it or they might just started learning it and um, we had this uh, German family on a boat uh, on a lake in Hungary and uh, they got over the wrong stop which meant on that boat on that day that they couldn't get back <laughs> and uh, they were saying the, the name of the town where they wanted to go to which was the other end of the lake and uh, nobody understood it I was like yeah okay so I can look up the train for you and everyone was just like how the hell did you understand that I was like well, I don't know. I just did because they obviously didn't say it right. They didn't say it with a Hungarian pronunciation, but 
from sort of understanding German and English, I figured out that that's what they wanted to say. And um, I think this is a sensitivity that you develop not because you speak the language that this person speaks, it's, it's more like you understand or your ears are more tuned onto um, mistakes like that or how, how it develops in their brain. So, to answer that question, I think there's my perspective and then from the, the outside, <laughs> the outside perspective. Because from my perspective, the advantages were, I mean, that I was able to, um, you know, travel and um, meet people on an international level and exchange with d people with different cultures and, um, yes, and also, you know, be, being able to move to a different country, speak a different language, all of that, I think, are advantages. But from the outside perspective, I think there's definitely the idea that if you are multilingual, you are automatically um, talented with languages, which I think can be the case, but isn't automatically the case. And I mean, I was brought up with two languages, so it means that I didn't have to work extra hard <laughs> to get those to get the inputs to become multilingual, whereas there are some multilinguals that actually work hard to become multilinguals, <laughs> and I think that makes a difference. And I, I know that somehow it's an advantage, but I would also say that it could be perceived as an advantage from other people, but for me I felt it somehow sometimes a disadvantage, that there was this expectation that you're always going to be good, but also that um, this sort of like idea that maybe you're being pretentious because you can speak several languages. The first and foremost, the best actually after so many years being in Germany, is I can play board games in different languages. I love board games and usually of course I tend to only play it in English. Even playing board games in Mandarin, only specific ones I would do that. And I wouldn't do it for Japanese because it's just it takes so much effort to read them. But being here for so long means that inevitably I will have to play some board games in German. Uh, the good thing is that it improves my German, so my game German is pretty good. <laughs> so I can read those German rules really well. Um, the other thing is that there are so many words that just are so much better in German compared to other languages. It's like it can explain that feeling I really want to have or I, the, the, the kind of a state that I really want to explain really well. A very good word that I personally really like is knapp because it's, of course you can say close, it's like it just means something was so close um, but I don't know, close just does not give me that feeling of knapp. Listen to that word, you know, like knapp. It's really good, you should learn it. <laughs> Additionally, there are a lot of concepts in different languages. I use German because it's I feel like German has, it's so hard to explain things from Mandarin to any other languages. There are some that's really nicely fit with uh, the German language, but with the German language, they have so many expressions and concepts that I never thought would be possible. I mean, maybe you think about it, but they gave a name to it. So for example, like Fernweh, which is the longingness to travel, uh, as opposed to homesick, or like Treppenwitz, which is like a comeback you think about after the fact. But like, you know, this exists but you don't give a name to it and now you do. Tarima Kasi Karana Monotone Video in it. Kami Harap under Manik Matinya. Bagilah video ini satu like, komen dan kongsikanlah video ini dengan keluarga dan rakan-rakan anda. Bauka anda menonton lebih video lagi? Pilihlah dari playlist yang mengandungi video-video yang serupa. Jangan lupa untuk subscribe kepada channel kami dan tekan butang loceng untuk menerima notifikasi mengenai video baru.